Neurotransmitters have a really compact role to play in our body. And during my PhD, I explored what the role of histamine and serotonin is within your bowels, because this can be associated with functional bowel disease. Now, when I started my independent research career, I started looking at dopamine. And initially this was mainly because dopamine has a very distinct oxidation peak, so that really makes electrochemical detection a lot easier. In this video, I'm going to, to show you why detection of dopamine is actually important, but also what are some of the complications when we would develop a sensor for it. So dopamine can be present in foods. So for instance, for this paper, and you can find a link uh, to all the papers in the description, I looked at bananas, because actually bananas are quite rich in dopamine. But the main source of dopamine that we have is tyrosine, which is an amino acid. So via our food, and foods that are rich in tyrosine are, for, it, for instance, uh, nuts, meat and eggs. This is first converted into uh, liver dopa, so L-dopa, and then this is converted into dopamine in our body. Dopamine is responsible for a whole range of complex functions in your body. So we know that it's associated with movement, because in Parkinson's patients who have a deficiency of dopamine, we see that there is slow movement and uncontrolled movement, which is because if there's less dopamine, it's harder for the cells to communicate with each other. So Parkinson's patients therefore are treated with levodopa, because levodopa, unlike dopamine, can cross the blood-brain barrier, which is then converted into dopamine. So the list of functions for dopamine can go on and on. So it's for instance associated with sleep, with motivation, with nausea, with memory. Dopamine is also seen as the molecule of pleasure, but it's more accurate to say that it's associated with rewards, so the anticipated pleasure that you get out of things. Now, what they've seen in animals where they've done trials, for instance, where they were rewarding monkeys with juices. So as soon as the monkeys were aware when they were going to get their reward, this is when their dopamine neurons actually stopped firing. So once they were aware of the anticipated pleasure that they were going out of it, that's where dopamine plays a role. It doesn't mean that they didn't enjoy all the treats they were getting. They were still getting pleasure out of eating it. And similar ex experiences are found in rats. And therefore it's accurate to say that dopamine has a role in predicting our behavior and is involved in decision making. Think of, for instance, two different types of food, the healthy option or a snack. Or look at these two pictures. Where would you want to go on holiday? So if we would be able to measure our dopamine content, perhaps it would give an indication of what our preferred option would be. I have mentioned before that dopamine has a distinct electrochemical signal. So that makes it seem that detection is easy. Because all what you really need is a surface and you just monitor the oxidation peak. And the more you have of it, the higher your dopamine content should be. But think of it if you want to measure something in a complex clinical sample, for instance. So in our blood, we have a myriad of other proteins, but we also have compounds like glucose, uric acid, and ascorbic acid. And all of these compounds, they actually have a similar uh, oxidation peak as dopamine, which will make detection complicated. The key to detection of dopamine in a complicated mixture is then to selectively extract it from the matrix. If you talk about proteins or, for instance, bacteria, our body produces antibodies, which are heavy proteins that are very good at detecting foreign invaders. So for some of these small molecules, such as for instance dopamine, these antibody receptors are not readily available. So what we do in my lab is we develop polymer alternatives, which you can find out more about in the recommended video. And they are able to discriminate between dopamine and other neurotransmitters that are actually quite similar such as, for instance, serotonin and histamine, which I mentioned before. And what is unique about this is that it's very easy to integrate these polymers into sensors that can be mass-produced. And we use a technique for that, what is, what is called screen printing. So what happens then is you have an ink, which is graphite-based, and then you put your polymers in there, you mix it, and then you can print specific patterns. And you can print hundreds of them within an hour. So actually you have an alternative which is very low cost, very reproducible, and screen printed electrodes are often used for commercial sensors. So where could we actually apply this then? So we could think of clinical applications, since dopamine would have an indication of general well-being. But you could also think of, for instance, levodopa, which I mentioned before, is the medication which is associated with Parkinson's disease. So thanks for watching this video, and if you want to have a look at how we can use these molecularly imprinted polymers, it's a very powerful tool to detect other things, such as, for instance, cardiac or cancer biomarkers, then please subscribe to this playlist.